the availability of water resources determines the well-being, prosperity and stability of societies worldwide. As fresh water becomes more scarce and is often unevenly distributed, tensions over its use are manifested in everyday life. Water security and the fair distribution of water is an issue of growing importance on the international agenda. Water cooperation is urgently required as water recognizes no administrative borders. There are 276 transboundary river basins in the world and an estimated 148 nations have international basins within their territory. The stakeholders in these basins have different and sometimes conflicting needs, claims and cultures. How do you build a communication channel between these different cultures? That is the key, that is the most difficult thing and that takes time because a cultural change is always taking time, notwithstanding that uh, it requires a great deal of financial investments, long-term investments. But, uh, if you invest into water, you invest into peace. Um, the history of water conflicts, and especially in, in the low countries, is that it creates institutions which are designed to cooperate rather than to have conflict with each other. We have a very good domestic experience in creating the institutional structures for solving conflicts around water. So why not export them abroad? Well, in my view, I think Water can be both a source of conflict and a source of cooperation. Uh, it is, doesn't have to be inevitable that you can have uh, water-related uh, disputes. And I think it is important for the Hague Institute, together with our partners in the Water Diplomacy Consortium, uh, in making sure that through our uh, innovative, policy-relevant research, our facilitation work, um, convening of conferences and a hands-on work on projects in countries at risk that water becomes something which brings together communities and people and which can be a source of cooperation rather than a source of friction. Water diplomacy is the profession that is instrumental in establishing the opportunities for cooperation. Water diplomacy is a matter of relations both between states and within states. It is about mutual decision making and the involvement of participants. Stakeholder participation is therefore a vital element both in water governance and in water diplomacy. Water diplomacy is a relatively new approach by combining a whole range of instruments – legal, voluntary, technical, economical, arbitration, mediation – to uh, manage water conflicts and uh, in this way it uh, gives room for diplomats and other people uh, involved in water conflicts to make effective solutions. Well, I think first of all the biggest challenge is to have water diplomacy recognized as such. Uh, recognized uh, by governments uh, and the larger diplomatic uh, community as a tool uh, that can help a great deal in peace building. Well, water diplomacy is very important because it plays an important role in preventing and managing water-related disputes, which is why we have made it a flagship project here at the Hague Institute for Global Justice. The Water Diplomacy Consortium acknowledges that the increasing stresses on water must be countered by effective mitigating responses, including the enhancement of water diplomacy to prevent and resolve water-related conflicts. For this reason, the Water Diplomacy Consortium has recently been launched during the International Year of Water Cooperation. The Water Diplomacy Consortium, which we are working on with four other partners, has a tremendous potential to become a hub here in the Netherlands for really innovative research, practical on the ground activities and a hub for training for on water related disputes. So it has tremendous potential and we are very 
uh, grateful with the support we've got from the other partners as well. Well, Klingendal is a 35 years old uh, think tank on international relations in general, so we are concerned about new sources of conflict, water among them, and on a, a particular niche diplomacy uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the Netherlands. The added value of our institute is that we are training the next generation of water leaders for the benefit of the developing countries and countries in transition, where most of these problems are. UPs brings added value to the uh, water diplomacy approach by combining the more technical aspects of water management with uh, knowledge and experience in the area of peace and peace building. The Dutch Water Governance Center has put together the five building blocks for good water diplomacy in a booklet. This booklet is called, not surprisingly, Five Building Blocks for Good Water Governance. It is our contribution for good water diplomacy in the years to come. The Hague Institute for Global Justice is an independent, non-partisan think tank. It was established to undertake policy-relevant research, training and facilitation activities at issues at the intersection of peace, security and justice. The Hague Institute is an active partner in the Water Diplomacy Consortium. The consortium is a global hub for the theory and practice of water diplomacy. A water crisis and the failure to adapt to climate change are number one and two on the list of greatest global threats, as highlighted during the last World Economic Forum in Davos. Not just from an economic perspective, these developments are also considered major threats to global peace and stability. It should therefore be a concern for national security and human security at the local level. This was highlighted time and again by international organizations such as the UN and the EU. Water and food insecurity are at the roots of conflict in many parts of the world. Look at cases like Syria, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Darfur in Sudan and even in the Rwanda genocide. All have links to conflicting claims over land and water. That is why we at the Hague Institute have given high priority to water and climate related problems. Not just by thinking at our institute, but also by working in the field. That is why we have ongoing on the ground activities in Africa, Southeast Asia and the Middle East. These activities focus on the prevention and resolution of water conflicts and advancing social justice and human security, especially in those areas which are impacted by climate change and water-related conflicts. Since 2013, the Hague Institute has been working worldwide on more than 10 projects on water diplomacy, water governance and the governance of climate adaptation. Assigned by the World Bank, and in collaboration with CIWI, the Hague Institute developed a framework for political economy analysis for transboundary river basins in Africa. This analytical tool measures the power dynamics related to shared resources. It was tested last year in several case studies in Africa, including the Equatorial Lakes region, the Lake Chad region and the Niger River Basin in West Africa. Two-thirds of all conflicts in Yemen are being caused by water scarcity and is resulting in about 2,500 lethal victims each year. As signed by the Netherlands Embassy in Yemen, a consortium led by the Hague Institute, analyze how these water conflicts arise in nine different case study areas. This analysis in particular focuses on the formal and traditional dispute resolution mechanisms. Based on this analysis, we recommend, amongst others, to strengthen existing dispute resolution mechanisms and to develop new tools such as mobile water courts. We strongly believe that by integrating our perspectives into the local procedures, we can deliver sustainable results. These recommendations are now being transformed into a pilot project through which we can test and develop the concept of mobile water courts in Yemen. 
The Hague Institute is also active as a mediator in the Israeli-Palestinian water conflict in two different projects. The first project was funded by the European Commission, the development of an NGO-based integrated and transboundary master plan for the Lower Jordan River Basin. In the second project, funded by the Dutch government, we work with Israeli and Palestinian delegations to operationalize the water annex. The water annex is part of the Geneva Accord, a model peace treaty developed by the Geneva Initiative. The track two agreements reached in these projects were both shaped within the parameters of a two-state solution. As such, the agreements strengthen the options for future formal Track 1 peace negotiations. In close cooperation with international partners, these projects have culminated in two new flagship projects, initiated, implemented and funded by the Hague Institute. A flagship project at the Hague Institute is Water Diplomacy, Making Water Cooperation Work. The aim of the project is to identify and operationalize the key factors that contribute to the transformation of water conflicts into cooperation over water. The project includes state-of-the-art research, facilitation of cross-border stakeholder dialogues and capacity building. This combination should allow us to reach a mutually accepted agreement and sustainable implementation in a number of case studies. By actively engaging with key stakeholders involved in the water conflicts, we assert mutual learning, create trust and a profound dialogue. Let me highlight a few of these case studies. In the Jordan River Basin, the Hague Institute works with Ecopeace Middle East to develop the first ever model agreement River Basin Commission for the Jordan Basin. This project includes a process of stakeholder engagement, joint fact-finding and multi-party problem solving with local and national stakeholders in Jordan, the Palestine territories and Israel. In the Ganga Brahmaputra River Basin, which covers India, Bangladesh, Bhutan and Nepal, we work with IUCN Asia to develop institutional arrangements for cross-border collaboration on shared resources. The cross-border cooperation on the Ganga and Brahmaputra rivers is considered crucial for the development and implementation of the Bangladesh Delta Plan. Another flagship project at the Hague Institute is on the governance of climate change adaptation in small island developing states. Within this project, there are ongoing activities in small island developing states in the Pacific, Caribbean and Indian Ocean, including Zanzibar, Fiji and Barbados. Zanzibar is officially not yet a small island developing state, but it is facing similar challenges and can therefore also learn from best practices of small island developing states. In Zanzibar, we have initiated participatory and adaptive planning processes together with local stakeholders. We will develop local climate action plans at vulnerable hotspots. These hotspots are facing challenges such as sea level rise, coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion, and water scarcity. As a result, there are severe impacts on local communities and key economic sectors, such as agriculture, fisheries, livestock, and tourism. The aim of this project is to contribute to sustainable economic development, climate change adaptation, and disaster risk reduction. In this process, we will also support the implementation of the Zanzibar climate change strategy. Pollution, floods, and water scarcity are not new problems, but there is increased pressure on sources like water, food, and energy. These are all basic necessities of societies. Increased tensions have led to sometimes disastrous outcomes and loss of human lives. Water diplomacy does not solve each and every problem, but it is a critical tool to ensure that shared water resources are managed efficiently, sustainably and equitably. We want to invite you to join us for a collective effort to achieve this.